Hello and welcome to Bits and Pieces, lecture number one, Bits and Bytes. So, a new course, welcome to that. Um, in this course, which is going to be a bit shorter than the other ones, only three lectures, we'll take a look on how we can work with bits, in individual bits, and how we can, can use that in, in Minecraft to, to make things work much better, much smoothly, less data to transfer, and so on. But before we get to that point, lecture three will we'll, um, go through what we can do with, with bits and bytes in, in Minecraft, uh, whereas the two first lectures are pr uh, well, a preparation for that. So, in, here in the first lecture, we'll take quite a uh, lot of um, uh, look on quite a lot of non-coding stuff. So, there quite a lot of uh, theoretical information there. We will code a bit today as well. Um, the next uh, time, lecture number two, we will code quite a lot as well. But these two first lectures, when I'm not going to work in Minecraft, I'm going to work with the software I used in the two first courses uh, before we got to Minecraft there as well, uh, Dr. Java. And then when I work with Minecraft in the end, I'm going to go back to Eclipse. So if you want to code along, you can totally continue with Eclipse. That's totally fine. But I'm going to use Dr. Java when, when it gets to the coding until we get to the Minecraft pod. Then I'm going to jump back to Eclipse. So so that's a bit of information about, about what we will do. But then there's some other things to go through before we start. So for instance, the requirements. What do you uh, need to know to take this course? Well, you need to know Java. You need to know object-oriented Java. And you also need to know how to make a Minecraft mod. So you need those three things. Um, if you don't know how to make a Minecraft mod and still wants to know about bits and bytes and so on, you can still take the first two lectures because we won't talk about Minecraft in those two f first ones. Uh, and that's that. Then we have an examination in the end, which is an assignment. And that's basically you hand it in and if everything works all right, then um, you pass the course. If something wasn't all right, then I send it back with some feedback and you'll have to fix that. And then you can just fix that and send it in again. and. Uh, that's pretty much it. You can't really fail a course. And then we, of course, have questions and exercises after each lecture. So the questions are there for you to see if you've learned everything, whereas the exercises are a bit more more practice, uh, like so. But that's pretty much it. Let's let's get started. But like I said, not a terrible lot of coding. At least not. There's no coding in the first 45 minutes here. So let's take a look at what we have instead. A zero. Well, why is there? Do you know how to count? You should know how to count. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Seems a bit ridiculous, right? Obviously, you can count from 0 to 9. Um, but we'll take a closer look on how to count, because things you might take for, for granted might not always be the case. So, how do we continue from here? It's very simple. We, we don't have any more numbers, so therefore we'll have to combine some numbers. So we combine 1 and 0 to make 10, and 1 and 1 to get 11, and so on. Uh, so there you go, 10, 11, 12, 13, and 14. Uh, that's that's totally easy. You, you can probably do that in your sleep. Like someone just asks you when you wake up, c count to 10. It's, it's nothing tricky. You can just do that. But what if we... we Take a closer look what we actually have. Uh, so here we are just added zeros in before all the all the digits there, and, and that's fairly simple. But what we want to do is, well, when we reach the nine here, then what's happened is, of course, we reset that and get to the zero over here, and then we increase the zero to get to one. Very simple. We have zero, zero, we get one zero, so that's 10. Zero, one, here we have 11, zero, two, 12. So we have just increased the, the first digit by one. Totally easy. You can count to 14, I, I assume. But what if we remove the numbers? What's the difference? As you can see, now we have different colors. Or if you're colorblind, I've also gi given them different shapes. I hope the shapes are distinguishable. So now all of a sudden we have like, um, only orange rectangles, we have yellow thin uh, horizontal ones, we have green um, thin vertical one, we have a turquoise cross, we have a cyan with a frame, we have a blue with a rotated H, we have a the purple H, we have the uh, magenta one with sloped corners, we have the pink one with a triangle top, and then we have the red here with a weird shape there. And what's the difference? Well, there is no difference. Well, we've taken a step away from working with numbers, which means that we won't recognize it right away as like 
uh, 8, 9, 10, 11. That, that's, that's so easy for us to know because we've done that all our lives. So it's so, so easy to just go 8, 9, 10, 11 without thinking what's going on. And that's exactly why we removed the numbers. And now we're going to work with colors and shapes. And then after a while we're going to reintroduce the numbers and see what we have come up with. So when we go here from orange-red to, to yellow-orange, basically what happens is, well, we reach the last one here. The last one was red here, and therefore we restarted with the orange one here. As you can see, we have the orange one up there as well. And and then, just yes, since we did that, we reset that digit. We'll obviously have to increase this digit. So we have the, the orange there, uh, or the rectangle there, which goes to the uh, the yellow one here, the, th the, the thin one, like so. So why does it work like this? Well, obviously what's going on is we have these different shapes, these different colors, 10 different ones, and that's why we have to reset here after 10 numbers. So therefore, the, the last one here, the red one there, uh, turns into the first one there. And since we started with, with a rectangle here, the, the full one there, the square actually, then we take the next one there. So pretty straightforward. Uh, we just remove the numbers, uh, the logic works the same. When we reach the point where we reach the last possible shape, last possible color, then we want that one to become the first one again the next time we count, but we increase the, the next digit instead. And that's exactly what we get here. Obviously this is exactly what we do when we count with numbers, but now we've just done the same thing with shapes. Why? Well, colors as well. Why have I done that? Well, think about it. What happens if we remove two? What happens? Can we do that even? Is it possible to work with less shapes? Well, we've taken a look. What, what are the rules we follow? Well, if we reach uh, a position where we have the last one, uh, like this, then we want to, well, restart there and increase another digit instead. So, so basically we reset and, and restart the counting. There's nothing there saying that we would need 10 different shapes or 10 different colors. There's nothing telling us that. So we can totally just remove two, like so. So I just removed two and cleaned up here because at this position here, we used shapes or colors that we just removed and therefore we can't use them and therefore also removed everything that uh, happened afterwards there. So, what now? What what happens now after, after the uh, the orange uh, magenta one here, or the uh, square uh, sloped corners one. Well, it's pr it's fairly easy if you if you just think about it. What we, do we have? Well, we have the last shape here, the last color, and therefore, what should we do? Well, we should restart. We should get the first shape here, the first color, the orange one there, and then we should increase that digit to the to yellow one there. And that's exactly what we do, like so. So we get yellow, orange, yellow, 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 green, yellow, turquoise, yellow, cyan there. So it's just a matter of restarting the calculation of the first digit while we increase the, the, first, uh, the other digit like so. And why is this special? Well, it's not. I just removed two shapes and said, all right, we're just going to work with eight shapes here. And, and we, it works uh, the same way. way. And then, then if we reintroduce the numbers, now it gets... Uh, maybe a bit tricky. So what we have now is, um, um, well, 0, 0, 1, 0, 2, 0, 3, 0, 4, 0, 5, 0, 6, 0, 7, 10, 11, 12, 13, and 14. Why is this odd? Well, we go from 7 to 10 right away. So that might feel a bit odd. But if we remove the numbers again, it's not. Think about it. We have eight different shapes here, eight different colors here. Um, and what what we get now, well, is nothing odd. When we reach the last one, what we do is do the reset. We we start back at the front here and we increase the other digit as well. But then when we reintroduce the numbers, it might feel a bit odd. But to be honest, it's not really. We're still using proper rules. We just said, right, we're not going to use ten different numbers. We're just going to use eight. So we work from zero to seven, and then. We don't have something called 8, we don't have something called 9, and therefore we'll have to reset. And in the end we get something like this. And this is the uh, octals. So, so octals uh, compared to decimals are when you count with a base of 8. It's called a base of 8 because we use 8 different symbols.
basically eight different numbers here so we go from zero to seven but as we also saw it worked totally fine when we worked with shapes or colors and the reason why I removed the numbers for a while was for you to be able to step away from what you have known uh, because usually it's so so easy to just say all right after five we have six then seven then eight and then nine and then ten and so on but not really why and if we remove the numbers uh, remove some of the shapes so we can uh, modify these things and then reintroduce numbers, what we get is the following. So we have 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 10, 11, 12, 13, and 14, and so on. So what does this mean? Well, I've, I've written a number here. So we have 21,451, okay? The 8 there that, that I have put, put yeah, right here means that it's base 8. So I, t I tell it this number is written in base 8. That means that we only have uh, numbers 0 to 7 in it. And it also means that it's worth something different. So how do we calculate, well, how do we convert this to the base we all know and love, uh, base 10, even though maybe we love some other bases even more. Um, but how do we do that? Well, it's fairly simple. And what we'll have to do is take a look on the different numbers here. Um, like so. So if we take a look on this number here, that's the lowest uh, digit there. What should we do with it? Well, that's a 1, and that's why I put a 1 over here. Then I need to multiply it by 1, okay? The 10 here obviously just means that it's in base 10, so all of a sudden we're starting to work with base 10, and that's the point, right? We wanted to convert the base 8 number to a base 10 number. So we started with the first digit, that's 1 by 1. The reason why we multiply it by 1 is because this position here is worth 1. The next position is worth 8. That's why we multiply it by 8. Why is it worth 8? Well, that's because we have base 8. That means that each time we move up a position, it's going to be worth 8 times more. If you think about it with base 10, what we have is, well, we have 1s, we have 10s, we have 100s, we have 1000s, we have 10,000s, and so on. So when you put your big number together, you have, maybe you have 5 1s, maybe you have 3 10s, maybe you have 200, not 200, 200s, and, and so on. And that's exactly what we have here. If we have a number on this position here, it's our 8s. What's the next one? Well, that's our 64s. So it might seem a bit odd that we have just these numbers, but the reason why it seems odd is because we have converted it to base 10. If we still were calculating in base 8, it wouldn't seem odd, like we wouldn't have 1s, we wouldn't have 8s, we wouldn't have 64s, we would have uh, things that actually made sense there. But, but what we do is just multiplying uh, each digit that we have with what the position is worth. So then we can go to the next one, that there we have 512, that's 8 times as much as 64. And finally, we have 2 here times 4096. Uh, so that's just what that position is worth. So why are they worth this much, these positions? Well, like I said, we do 8 times as much each, each position, it's worth 8 times more. And that can very easily be seen if we do it like this. So the first position is worth 8 to the power of 0. Then the next one is 8 to the power of 1, 8 to the power of 2, to the 3, 4, and so on. And then we just continue like that. Uh, and the reason why it works like that is because we multiply it by 8 more each time. And that's exactly what we have here, That what that means. What's the next step? Well, then we can do the calculations. So we should do 1 times 8 to the power of 0, 5 times 8 to the power of 1, and so on. And what we get is the following. We get 1, 40, 256, 512, and 8, 1. 9, 2. And that's what all of these different digits are worth. Um, so when you, if you think about it, if you have the number, for instance, 201, then you have three digits there that is actually meaning anything. And the one there is at position 1. That means that it's going to be 1 times 1. That's what it's worth. Then we have, uh, the next position, we have a 0. Uh, that's the 10. So we get 0 times 10. That's not really anything at all. So that's 0. And then we have uh, the 2 there, that's just a 2, but it's at another position, it's at the hundreds position, and therefore we get 200. That means that the result is going to be 201, and that's exactly what we had, obviously. So uh, the value of a number is the different digits, depending on where they are as well. And that's exactly what we have here. The 1 here, that we have in the beginning, well, the lowest here, is going to be worth 1. But a 5, since that is position 2, that's 5 times 8, and it's going to be worth 40. If we sum all of these together, uh, we'll get the result. 
So it's just a matter of summing them up. So we have 1 plus 6 to 2, that's 11. Right, so we have 10 there and 1 there. That means that we get a 1 uh, as the result, but we also get an extra 1 here in the next line. Then we can add that 1 to this 9, I guess, and get a 10. But then we have 10 more here if we sum these guys up together. So that's 20. So we get a 0 down there. Uh, then we add a 2 here. So we have 2 plus 2, that's 4, plus 5, that's 9, plus 1, that's 0, or well, that's 10 actually, and therefore we get a 1 there, and if you kept attention, then you would realize that the answer would be 9001. So if we have 21,451 in base 8, then if we convert that to a base of 10, we get 9001, and the reason why we get that is because, well, the individual uh, bits, uh, the individual digits here are worth 140, 256, 512, and 8192. Um, and then when we sum those up together, what we get is 9001 like that. But as you can see, we have fewer digits in the result than what we had to start with. And the reason why it is like that is because the base here is higher. What does that mean? Well, that means that each time we take a step here to the left, it, we're going to increase it by 10. Well, we multiply it by 10. So this one is our ones, here's our tens, here's our hundreds, and here, here is our thousands. Okay, that makes sense, right? Uh, obviously, if we have 9,001, then the nines are our thousands. Um, but if we take a look on the base 8, 8 is obviously lower than 10, and that means that here's our ones, here are our eights, here are 64s, here are our 512s. 512 is much smaller than uh, than 1000, and therefore it's not going to be enough to just have 512s. And that means that we might need another digit. Here we have our 4096s, which obviously is more than our thousands. Well, it's worth more than our thousands. But of course we only have two of those, whereas we have nine of the... Um, uh, the thousands. So if we have a higher base, so we have base 10 here instead of base 8, that mean, means that the result is going to be lower when it comes to, uh, well, what it did is look like. So we have 9001 here, we, we had 21,000 there. But obviously they have exactly the same name, number, uh, the same value, it's just that we're uh, writing them in different basis like, like that. So from 21,451 in base 8, that's the exa exact same thing as what we converted it to, which is 9,001 in base 10 there. And the reason why, uh, well, we could convert it from base 8 to base 10 was obviously because we used 8s here in uh, in the base here, so we have 8 to the power of 0, 8 to the power of 1. If we wanted to convert it to another from another base, we will see that later on, then what we would do would simply uh, replace that 8 with something else, and it would work exactly the same. But what if we want to do the opposite? If we want to convert from base 10 to base 8 instead? So we have 541 here, the 10 there obviously uh, tell us that this is a base 10 number, not a base 8 or base something else. Um, so, what do we do? Well, we'll have to do it a bit differently, a bit uh, more steps, I guess. First of all, we need to take a look on all the multiples of h. Obviously, we can't take a look of them all, but we take a look on of the first one. So, we have a to the power of 0, that's 1, a to the power of 1, that's 8, a to the power of 2, that's 64. We've seen these before, we just saw them last time, but we might have to continue with a to the power of 5 and so on. Um, 1, 8, 64, 512 and 4096. And all these tens are obviously just to mark that these are in base 10 here. So what do we want to do? Well, we want to take a look on these different numbers here. We uh, have our number 541 here, and what we want to do is find a multiple that is lower than uh, our number 541 here. Well, we have four. 1, 8, 64, and 512. But what we want to do is take the highest one of those, which is 512. So that's the one we're going to remember. So remember 512 here, because when we take go to the next step here, I have marked that in, in black, the other one's turned grey. Uh, and what we want to do is take the number, which was 541. Uh, as you can see, I'd, I haven't marked that these are base tens now, just because, uh, well, it's it should be quite obvious and it just takes extra space there. Um, but, but what we have here is uh, 541, 
and then we divide it by 512 because that was the highest base that was uh, well not by base sorry multiple that was lower than the number itself and what we get is 1 that, that wouldn't be the case if we use normal division but what we're going to use uh, integer division so uh, we can f uh, fit one full 512 inside 541 there and then what we want to do is take uh, the remainder which is 29 because we use mod here that's going to give us the remainder which is 29 so we're going to use both these values we're both going to use 1 and 29 but for now we can skip one the one we will we will go back to it and, and see what it is we uh, remember the 29 instead and then what we want to do is head over to to the next uh, multiple the multiple that is just below the one we had so now we get 8 to the power of 2 which is 64 instead of the one that was 512 there and what we want to do is use this 29 that we got left you know this one now we're back in 512 one so we take that result there and use it here in the next one okay so what do we do well 29 is obviously less than uh, 64 so this is not going to give us too much because therefore we get a result of 0 in the first one, first spot there, and just because that's the case, we're going to get a 29 here in the result as well. So if we didn't get anything here, the result is 29. Then we can just continue. Use 29, but this time with the 8. The result here will be 3 if we divide it. Uh, 29 divided by 8 equals 3, but we also get a remainder of 5. And then we can just take that 5 to the very last step here. Uh, so we get 5 divided by 1 equals 5, and it in the last step we'll always get zero as the result here and when we do so we're, we're done uh, we, we might get it earlier and, and we would be done there as well so what do we want to do now well let's head back here okay so what we have here is we're asking ourselves how many 512s do we have how many 64s do we have how many 8s do we have how many 1s do we have and so on and if you think about it that's exactly what we want to know if we have a number uh, a base 10 number we're asking ourselves how many ones do we have how many tens do we have how many hundreds do we have and so on and if we know all of those informations then we can put the number together and know what's going on okay but what have we done here well since we've done integer division what we check is how many times do we fit 512 inside 541 and that means well we fit it once that means that we have one 512 and therefore we have already used 512 of, of the number we want to convert and therefore we have 29 left then we try to see how many 64s do we have well we don't have any 64s at, at all because well 29 is too small then we continue and say alright integer division with 8 how many 8s do we have well we have 3 and then we do the mod here so we have 5 left and that's obviously the ones like that. So if we think about it like that, so we check how many 512s we have, how many 64s we have, how many 8s we have and how many 1s we have, then we can just take a look on that. So we have the 1, that's 512s, so 1, 0, 3, 5, and that's the result. 1, 0, 3, 5. So the result is 1035 and obviously that's in base 8. And the reason why it's base 8 is obviously because we used those multiples here to uh, make it work there. If we use another mo well multiples of something else then it would be another base. So if we use for instance uh, I don't know 3 there then then we would uh, convert it to base 3 like so. You can convert directly between like base 8 and base 3 but it might be a bit more tricky because we're so used to base 10. So it's easier to just convert another base to or from base 10 and if we want to go from like 3 to 8 then we then it, it's actually much more simple for us to think if we go from 3 to 10 and then 10 to 8 and that's totally possible. Right, that's pretty much it for, for base 8. So the octals there. The octals or base 8 is not what we most commonly use. It's, it's a fairly common base to use. Um, uh, it's not like, like base 3, you, n you almost never use base 3, even if you could. Uh, but we have two th more things that are much more common than base 8, and we're going to take a look on both of them. So, here we go, back at base 10. You can see we go from 0, 0, all the way to 1, 4, like so. And uh, after 0, 9, we head to 10. So this is just normal stuff. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. You can probably count like that. I managed to do it right now. Um, I'm pretty awesome like that. Uh, but now if we remove the numbers like so, 
we get to this screen again. We've seen this before. Just remove the numbers, we get the shapes and the colors, and at the top here I'm, I've just listed the ones we have. Last time we removed two and just so alright, everything actually works the same, but of course uh, we get to some different numbers and we might have to convert them back and forth. What if we remove another amount? Well, do we? Does that actually matter? No, of course not. We have some simple rules, and those are when we reach the position where we go, go got to the last shape, the weird one there, or the last color, if you want to go by color, the red one, then what we want to do is just restart the counting, which give, gives us to this, uh, well, orange square, and that's this one over here. And then we increase the other one, like that. So we increase the uh, orange square there to the yellow thin horizontal one, like that. But, well, if we take the numbers, it's pretty obvious. We just go from 9 to 10. We just know that. But we don't really uh, think of why that happens. But that simple rule that we have, we just increase like so, we can apply that to, to any page. So let's just remove almost everything. Let's remove eight of these different symbols, eight of these different colors, eight of these these different shapes, which will only leave us with two. The orange square and the uh, thin yellow uh, horizontal thing in there. We will only use those two. And to be able to do that, we will have to clean up a bit and remove the rest there. Okay, so just two. That seems a bit, uh, well, odd. We just have two different things. Well, that's totally fine. That's exactly what we're going to do. Um, and how do we count with this? Well, like anything else, we have orange here and yellow, or well, uh, I can call them square and rectangle. And if we have square and rectangle, or orange and yellow, what we can see is that the yellow is already the last one that we do have. Therefore, we'll have to restart. And that should, when we count here, the yellow one, or the rectangle one, should go into an orange square. And we should also increase the orange square to the yellow one like so. And then when we do that again, we get to yellow, yellow. But if we do that, we're already out of space. We don't have any more digits to work with, because think about it. If I want to increase uh, this, then I want to reset the first yellow, the first uh, rectangle, and then I want to reset the other one, because we're already at a max, max there as well, and therefore we want to increase the last one. Obviously, we could just add something there, but to show it better, I'm just going to going to increase these things to use three digits. So we have uh, orange, 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 or rectangle, 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 um, like so, or square rather. Sorry, I named them wrong. So, but we get a rectangle of the three different squares here. And then when we increase it by one, we get, we get the uh, yellow rectangle there, the thin one. And then we get that one there, we reset the first one. We get Now we get to that position that we had before. So we had the orange square and the two yellow uh, thin rectangles there. And then it's just a matter of resetting the first one, resetting the second one, and increase the third one. Then we get to this point. Then we increase that, so we get the, the yellow one there, the thin one there. We reset that, increase the other one, and finally we reach this point like so. Okay, we're using the same rules as before, but this time we're obviously have to use a few more digits to, to do very simple counting. We just count eight times here, but we still have to use three digits, and we wouldn't require a fourth if we wanted to continue. Uh, but that's just because we just have two different shapes here. And if we add numbers again, what we'll get is the following. So we have 000 to 001 to 010 to 011, and then we get 100, 101, 110, and 111. And this is called binary. So in binary, we just have two different shapes, two different colors, two different symbols. We have zeros and ones. That they are zeros and ones are obviously not necessary if we take a look at this. No zeros and ones, but it works totally the same. But well, to represent it to us in an easy way, we usually use zeros and ones, but you can also um, do like, um, well, on, ons and offs. That's basically why you, we have binary. We want on and off states. And this is the most common uh, base when it comes to co computers, uh, I must call it, because, well, computers stores their data in binary. Why? Well, in the history of, of, of computers, uh, in the beginning, one, one tried to make computers with base 10. But it's very tricky to store 
something in base 10 because what you would have to have what what people had was gears with 10 different uh, positions but it's very tricky to check which which position that gear is in and it just gets very tricky to build you need quite a big gears but obviously that was uh, quite a long time ago but if you use base 2 you just have two different states you have on or off then you can just have something that can either be in an off state or an on state uh, it can be if it has some electricity in it it can be um, uh, how magnetized it is and so on you just check if it's on or off and well that's easy to check for just one specific location but then you have a ton of them instead and that's binary and that's how you store things in computers and when it comes to computers then each single digit here is what's called a bit more to that later and in the result if we remove the colors and the leading zeros what we get here is how we count in binary 0 1 10 1 1 one zero zero so 101 110 and 111 like that there we go what's now well we have seen uh, base 8 we have seen uh, base 2 now and it's fairly simple like that but let's go back to this screen so we have zero 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 one and so on this is base 10 and I was talking about well octals are not the most uh, common thing to use. We had two more common things and that's first of all the uh, binary uh, but we also have something else. So let's remove the numbers yet again and see which ones we have here. So we have orange, we have uh, yellow, green, turquoise, cyan, blue, purple, magenta, pink or and red and then we have the corresponding shapes for that as well and um, which one should we remove now? How many should we remove? Should we remove nine and just get one left? No, that's that's pretty ridiculous. But what we want to do is actually to add more shapes, add more colors. Can we do that? Yeah, totally. Why wouldn't we? We have some rules. When we reach the last shape, the last color, then what we want to do is, well, simply, uh, well, restart we go here from the red weird shape to the last uh, well to the first one again sorry uh, the orange uh, square here and then we have the, uh, the yellow thin one like that and that's pretty much what we have there and then, then we just continue like so just like before if if the red one wouldn't be the last one then well that wouldn't be an issue we would just use that rule anyways um, so what if we add things here at the end those arrows represent that. Well, just do that. So as you can see, I cleaned up a bit. I moved these things up and also added more shapes. So what we have now is, uh, well, we have orange, we have yellow, we have, well, these are colors, obviously. We have green, turquoise, cyan, blue, purple, magenta, pink, red, brown, white, dark green, dark purple, dark red, and... Uh, I don't even know, yellow, greenish, darkish thing in there. Or if we go with the shape, what we have is the square, the uh, horizontal rectangle, vertical rectangle, the cross, the, uh, well, yeah, the cross, the, the framed one, the uh, rotated edge, the edge, the sloped uh, corners, the triangle top one, the weird one, the tiny one, the X one, the one with the triangle at the bottom, the circle, the diamond, and finally the hourglass, like so. And what do we do now? Well, there's nothing special, really. We go from uh, here, orange, orange, or square, square, to orange, red, or if you want to, from square to the weird shape. But that doesn't stop us. We're not at the end yet. We have six more shapes to go. So it's just a matter of adding no, those, like so. Let's continue the counting. We haven't reached the final shape yet, the final symbol. So therefore, we can just do that. And when we are done with that, what do we want to do? Well, when we're done with that, then what we obviously have to do is use our rule. We restart. Like that. Pretty simple, right? So it doesn't matter how many shapes we have, how many symbols we have. We can have fewer. We have seen two. We can have three if we wanted to. We can have seven. We can even have 2,000 different shapes. Obviously, we don't need as many... Um, as many uh, digits because it takes us 2000 steps into until we actually need the second digit but obviously we then need 2000 different symbols which t leads us to another point
when we removed shapes, when we used bases that were lower than 10, then we could just use, uh, well, use the normal numbers and remove some, so we didn't use them all. But now we went into the opposite direction. Now we need more numbers. So what should those numbers be called? Should What should those look like? Well, one could add new symbols, but that would be a bit annoying because then we would need keyboards that supported that, we would need to give them names, give them symbols, well, we'll tell them how to look, put them into it, all the fonts and so on. So what people usually use, or well, the way to go with it, is to use A, B, C, D, E and F as the other ones there. So what we have here is that when we reach the one after the nine here, we have an A, we have a B here, then we have a C, a D, E, and finally a F. So we just continue like so. So if uh, if we want to go higher than 10, then what we usually do is just continue with the alphabet. So we start at one I, I, we start at A, and then B, C, D, E, and F like so. And if we wanted even higher, um, uh, well, bases, then we could just f continue with the alphabet like so. But a hexadecimal like this is called, um, so base, 2 is binary, base 8 is octals, uh, base 10 is decimal, and base 16 is hexadecimal. Um, so hexadecimal here we use 0 to 9 and then A to F. And it might seem a bit weird now because what we have is 0, 9. Okay? Then we have 10 over here, so it's quite far away. But if we go, we remove the numbers again, ignore the numbers, they're just confusing at times. Uh, we can see our normal rules apply, the red one is not the last one, that means that we have to continue to add these ones, but then we reach the yellow, uh, orange one, or the thin horizontal one, and the square there, when we actually have reached the end first. So, when we add the numbers, we'll have to keep that in mind. So, it might get a bit tricky to wrap your head around that at first, but if you just think about it, remove the numbers, think about it as just shapes, they could be whatever, and, and then add that back. That's exactly why we didn't work with the numbers right away. And if we go here, then, then we get that result. So, well, 10 here, it's still called 10, it's still 1, 0 there, but it's obviously not worth the same thing because we have squeezed in other numbers in here just because, well, 10 is not the number of the 9, 10 is the first number where we use, uh, well, the, the other digit for something else than 0, like that. So now if we remove everything, what we get is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, A, B, C, D, E, F, and then 10, 11, 12, 13. So it might look like we've just squeezed in A, B, C, D, E, E and F there, but of course they will be used later on as well when we get to higher uh, n symbols again, because obviously we'll reach these ones as well when we have a 1 in front, and then when we have a 2 in front, and, and a 3 in front, and so on. And in the end, what we'll actually get is, uh, like, uh, we get might get an A in the beginning, so we might get A2, A5, and so on. And um, why is hexadecimal good? Well, We'll take a closer look, uh, look on that later, but it's very easy to to um, you know uh, store store data with it because binary is two symbols, right? If we have two symbols, what can we do with that? Well, we can do well not too much. We need quite a lot of digits, but if we have two, and then we add um, for for one digit, right? And then we have two for another digit then that we have four numbers, right? Two times two, okay? So both, both the, well, the first symbol can be in two states, and the second symbol can also be in two states, so that means that we have four combinations, right? If we add another uh, bit, as it's called, and now when we work with binary here, um, th then we get two times two times two, so we have eight different states. That's octal, right? So that's what, why we use octals on, at times. But what we'll see later on is it's actually even better if we work with, with 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. So that's 4 bits, and that's 16. And that's exactly how much we can represent with one hexadecimal digit like that. And that's pretty much it why we use hexadecimal as well. But I would say that binary is the most common one. Then we have hexadecimal for 4 bits, and then we have... Um, octals for three bits if we so want to, but we'll take a closer look on what we can use bits for after the break. So then we will see how bits and bytes are 
well what their connections are like that and uh, now we're obviously only taking a look on the different bases and if we want to calculate with all the different bases we do it like we did before with the octals but that's pretty much it for now we we end here like five minutes early but after the break we'll take a look in dr java how we can work with binary and uh, well different bits and you know things like that uh, when we code so i'll see you uh, after the break <laughs>